start. And hello, <laughs> welcome to uh, another episode of Loose Cannon. Uh, <laughs> this whole thing just really threw me off. Uh, we are, I think we're going to be ending uh, the first half because this is just such a huge thing. We're going to go through the full season of just the the pre pre-game lore. Which is a good thing because the seasons go on, you only get two, maybe three books, and to fill out the year, you know, it, it gets a little tight. Uh, so yeah, <clears throat> yeah, and this has been a, this was a big one. I mean, it was a big one to dissect. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot. There was a real lot in it. Just like from from the get go, there was this. <laughs> so, some of the t- you had to you had to reread it multiple times to really get everything that it has to offer out of it. And, you know, like, that's why uh, we spent so long on it on top of other things, like just getting distracted and focusing on specific (laughs) aspects that probably aren't the most important aspects. But hey, it all, it's all interconnected. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's right. Everything in Destiny is, is interconnected. Yeah. We take a holistic approach on loose cannon. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, uh, let's, let's jump into it. Uh, do you have, uh, it was, uh, the Lethe, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to throw that. You know, what's funny. You know, what's funny is all of my, all of my teens and twenties. I remember back to reading, uh, Greek mythology in in, in high school, and mm-hmm. you, did re- you didn't really go over it very much. Um, so if you were interested in it, you kind of had to look it up on your own. And so I wasn't interested at all. I didn't want to care about it. I didn't really pursue that at all. And so I was one of those guys that just pronounced it leth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of, like, words in, in like, Greek mythology that it's like you look at it from like an English perspective and it's like, no, no we pronounce <laughs> right. the letters here. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, you know, you look at it and you're just left. Yeah. Right. Or Lee. I, I think I, I think I called it Leith. I did not. I know I didn't call it Leithy when I was like reading like Percy Jackson books. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and oh yeah, and then and then in America we're just we're the worst at you know bastardizing yeah. uh, languages or you know pronunciations from other languages. <clears throat> Tartarus you know, don't give me was a this. pain in the ass as well. What was it? Tartarus. Tartarus, yeah. Because I'm like Tartarus. Yeah. That's in Halo Ooh. a lot. <laughs> Tartarus. Yeah, Tartarus. It, it it didn't it didn't feel like a word to me. It was it was so ancient that I'm like, that's not language. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It's funny because uh, there's a lot of um, you know European uh, like people from the Norse area. The you know the dialects like uh, mm. you know Sweden, Norway, all that, um, <clears throat> Iceland, and, and they probably just are just slapping their heads every time they see a Marvel movie because all of the all of the words from <laughs> from their from their language are just mispronounced. Yeah. Completely. Oh. Anyway, here we go. Another American bastardizing uh languages <laughs> from other cultures. <laughs> Alright, so this week's lore card, well actually it was a week before, but you know, it's a bi weekly show, so yeah, you know just take it back. Yeah, so I, I chose to uh, bring this one in today because it kind of ties in what, 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 with what we are talking about. Um, mm. Everybody knows at this point, uh, if you don't, spoiler alert, Banshee is Clovis. dun dun, Sorta. Kinda. I, I, I mean, yeah. I, I, I see <laughs> what you mean. <laughs> All right, so this one is cool because <clears throat> it has like a little bit of a like a call to that. Uh, so Lethe is an ornament for, for uh, lament. That's the chainsaw sword. 
mm-hmm. that everybody you know went to go on the quest to get. It's really cool. Uh, so Lethe is an ornament for that one, but it's in Greek mytho- mythology. Um, it's the personification of oblivion, so it means forgetfulness. It's the river which flows through Hades, from which all the souls of the dead drank, so that they would forget their mortal lives. So one of the things you do when you die and you go to Hades in Greek mythology is you have to cross a river and you're, there's a ferryman and he takes you on a boat across that river. And as you're going across the river, you're forgetting everything about your past life because Lethe was the underworld river of oblivion and it's a goddess. So it's kind of like it's a river, but it's also a goddess. <laughs> um the shades of the dead, that's, you know, people who are, uh, that's what happens to you. Like when you die, you become a shade of the dead. Um, you have to drink of the water to forget your mortal life. And, you know, this is where it kind of bisects. Some accounts tell it formed the border between Hades and the paradise realm of Elysium. Uh, the other four rivers of the underworld were Styx, Acheron, and I cannot pronounce the phlegm one. Phlegathon. And Coxidus, yeah. <laughs> I, I only know Phlegathon because of the the game Hades, and that's how they that's how they pronounced it. Oh, we probably got it wrong there too. If it's an American game, <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, Lethe was sometimes identified with the Daimona Lethe, uh, which means forgetfulness personified. So the river Lethe flowed through the plain of Lethe in Hades, a.k.a. Amelis Potamus, which is also the river of unmindfulness. So this is the river which flows around the cave of Hypnos, where its murmuring sounds induce drowsiness. Uh, The shades of the dead were required to drink from its water in order to forget their earthly life. In the cult of Trophonios, It is said here at the Chthonian Oracle of Trophonius in (laughs) Boitia. He, the supplicant, must drink water called the water of Lethe. Forgetfulness. So there are a lot of words that kind of pop up in Destiny. And I thought this was neat because the, the Vex were kind of integral in the development of Exos. Mm -hmm. And the Vex, in their world, there is a lot of Greek mythology tie-ins, you know, stuff like that. Uh, But there are a couple words that come up with the Vex, like supplicant. Um, You know, there's there's the... uh, What is the... The... uh, Wyvern, Gorgon... Yes! Goblin, Minotaur... Yeah, all that. Hydra... Cyclops. In the Vault of Glass, the Templar as well. Yeah, that's a part of this um, this story as well. So it, it's funny because if you think about if you think about Banshee uh, being Clovis and having to forget himself because he's rebooted so many times, this is a neat little ornament which kind of ties into that. Yeah. So anyway. Um, the Lethe forgetfulness, this is where um, you drink the water. It causes you to forget your past life. But in a couple of stories, like in the cult of Trophonius, um, it, if you're a supplicant, you're supposed to drink the water of Lethe to forget <clears throat> so that you may forget all that you have been drinking hitherto. So that's part of their wordage. And afterwards, you drink another water, which is the water of memory, which causes you to remember what you see after you drink that water. So even though you're drinking the water to forget your past life, they don't in the in Hades and in the underworld, you can't even remember how you got there. So you're supposed to keep drinking more water. Uh, so like in Ovid, which is a very popular um tale that people uh, reference which tells about Hades and all of the Greek mythologies in a more concise way Uh, it's called Metamorphosis so in Ovid he wrote uh, the description was much more thought out he wrote near the Cimmeril 
A cave lies deep in the hollow of a mountainside, the home and sanctuary sanctuary of lazy somnus, or sleep, a.k.a. hypnos, where Phoebus, the sun, beams can never reach, and at morn or noon or eve, but cloud, cloudy vapors rise in doubtful twilight. There silence dwells. <clears throat> Only the lazy stream of Lethe, neath the rock, with whisper, low o'er pebbly shadows, trickling lulls to sleep. Before the cavern's mouth, lush poppies grow, and countless herbs from bland essences, a drowsy infusion, dewy knocks, or night, nicks, distills, and sprinkles sleep across the darkening world. So it's a little bit poetic, whatever. Uh, the underworld contains Lethe, and it's meant to be measureless, calm stream that must take away all our cares and our past memories. And so poets have used Lethe as a metaphor for the underworld in general. And so as we've gone on in language, when you hear poets or musicians talk about Lethe, um, there's some really cool references to that. And so it's been used in pop culture even, obviously, in movies. Um, but there are a lot of different poets. So like even Edgar Allan Poe, uh, looking like the leaf, see the lake of conscious slumber seems to take and would not for this world awake, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought there was really a, one cool one. So I found one poet and it was, it's a short poem, but I just kind of quoted the line there. Um, Fenton Johnson wrote the Scarlet Woman. And at the end of it, it's got this really cool line and I liked it. So it was, now I can drink more gin than a man for miles around. Gin is better than all the water in Lethe. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there you go. Drink from the river, Lethe. But gin is still better. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a it's a really interesting thing. Not even just uh, Clovis, but all EXO and also all Guardians forget who they were in the process of becoming an EXO in the process of becoming a Guardian. And even Awoken, actually. <laughs> they forgot who they were, too, didn't they? Yes, yeah. And, they're, and the Awoken even used the word Lethe, like um, Lethe Nobilis, yeah. which was a scout rifle from D1. That's true. Which was tied to the Queen. Yeah, it's it's a it's a reoccurring theme in Destiny, and the this sword is is a really good one uh, to embody it. I think. Yeah, well, I like the tie. I like the tie into Guardians having to forget their past lives because <clears throat> it mirrors a lot of what's happening in Greek mythology, also in Egyptian uh, mm -hmm. mythology, where when you die, you're forced to live an afterlife first before you go on to your plane of you know peace like elysium or you know just this wonderful experience that goes on forever in order to, for you to get there in your afterlife you're equipped with either a book or a, a trial and tribulation in order to ascend to the next lane or plane and so it's 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 very similar if you think about the collapse and we're all dead or undead, however you want to look at it, and then we're sent off on these trials and tribulations so that we can ascend to the next plane of peace. <laughs> so if you think about all the demons and monsters that these Greek, uh, Greek go uh, heroes had to fight in order to you know, become gods or, or get to wherever they want to go. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit like what we're doing. That's interesting because, as as you know, there is that other lore book, Trials and Tribulations, uh -huh. <laughs> which is uh, all about Osiris's followers, specifically Vance. Yeah, yeah, and and oh, so Osiris's lore, you know, a lot of the word usage and references come from Greek. I mean, come from Egyptian mythology, <laughs> which is almost. Which is almost the proto mythology for most mythologies in the world, <clears throat> if you want to break it down. I mean, almost everything came from. I mean, all the stories have a tie back to Egypt, Egyptian, uh, you know, 
mythology. So there are a lot of stories that are in Greek mythology that parallel with Greek with uh, Egyptian mythology, and then so on and so forth as cultures expanded and spread across the world. All right. Well then, uh, do you have the uh, thing open? I do not. Doc, document. Oh, get it. So we are uh, we are going to start at entry seven. I think we left off at entry seven because I remember talking about wanting to do something uh, for the entry after entry seven, and I did off camera. I was going to do it on camera, but <laughs> I did it off camera to test it out, and I've decided I'm never doing it again. So <laughs> I have the. I took a video of it. I can play the video of it. For anyone watching, watching live, watching on YouTube, uh, if you're not watching live, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> on YouTube, it's it's interesting. You can just look up. Uh, we'll, we'll I'll I'll say what it is to to find it. And uh, so in entry seven, it's uh, talking about going through the Vex Gate. The so Clovis goes to Europa is trying to find the secret to Exo, is trying to find the secret to, to Immortality, is there because of Clarity, uh, finds Clarity Control, which is the veiled statue in the raid, which I believe we showed a picture of. Uh, it's also the yeah. veiled statue. I mean, Clarity Control is the ra- the veiled statue that we see in the Deepstone Crypt raid, but it is the same statue that we've seen on the moon and in the Black Garden and in... Uh, concept art right and i think those are the only places we've seen veiled statues yeah unless Man. you hmm? unless you carry iron banner <laughs> I, I mean i think that's funny but it's definitely not the same i saw some people I saying it was supposed to be um Ephrodite who who had like abandoned the iron lords yeah they were, they were like eh, let's not do that yeah which seems very possible but so they find this they find this planet and just to kind of get to the good uh, they find this planet that shouldn't be able to exist because it is so old the sun is so large how can it exist and it turns out that the 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 existence of life on the planet the vex was using this the sun as a forge they were feeding it metals and they were extracting metals from it uh, more precious metals from it which shouldn't have been common but they found a way to make it common and that's kind of where the the vex began and uh so in this uh on this planet they they mention uh we ventured out of the ruins onto an island of living living glass broken by fissures of deep green light and reservoirs of white fluid the white fluid of course being radiolarian fluid but uh, living glass does does that kind of sound like uh, Volta glass to you? Yes, absolutely. Like yeah, it, so it, it, that so construct that construct has to have some tie into the Volta glass, whether it be uh, a portal or a fragment or just another realm. But yeah, it's got to be some window to the Forge Star, right? So I, that's kind of where I wanted to go with this. I don't think that they're they decided to bring back Volta glass. Because they're like, let's bring back Vault of Glass, you know, for no, for no, uh, arguably for no reason. Venus isn't right. back, you know, the Cosmodrome's back. It makes more sense, in my opinion, if you wanted to just bring back a raid, bring back Wrath of the Machine, you can reintroduce Siva Splicers and just like really go nuts with the variations of Fallen that we have. And that would be neat. Uh, that would be neat. I am sorry about this. It's got a... Uh, I think that the... Okay. Sorry, I, I'm expecting a, a very important package today, and it's inopportune. I, I am good, though, I believe. <laughs> it just it updated just now, but it's saying that it, it left at 5 in the morning, and it's telling me now. It's like, come on, man. Oh, man. Um, yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> Yeah, that, that happens saying. to me all the time too. I think I think the Vault of Glass coming back is not without reason. It's not like let's bring back the first raid. It's because they were going into this lore about everything and they were making the conscious decision 
that the Vault of Glass is the raid that should come back because it has tie-ins to uh, Volantis uh, 4022 or whatever the hell it's called. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which is this planet. Uh, Ford Star 2082 Volantis. Yep. Yep. Which is interesting if you think about a Forge Star and a bunch of ra- ra- Radiolarian Vex milk swimming around without being just vaporized. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so there's something... Okay, so we learned that the Radiolarian fluid that the Vex are made of aren't necessarily the Radiolaria that we know of on Earth, which there is... So for you that don't already know, and most people know, but there is um, an organism called Radiolaria. And it's a very simple cellular uh, organism. And its structure looks a little bit like um, tiny honeycombs with spikes. Mm-hmm. And it comes in all kinds of shapes and sizes. And it's one of the very, it's it's a very interesting thing if you ever want to look it up, but they come in all kinds of different little cellular structures and they're very simple they have no minds they don't know anything they don't do anything other than exist and consume right so that's simple similar to how the vex work (laughs) so if you want to if you want to think about it that way but they're named after that so it's it's i i'm so happy that you you brought that up because it's it's um i remember back when radiolarian fluid was first uh talked about way back in like d1 and okay. everyone's like oh my god vex are radiolaria and i'm like what the fuck's radiolaria let me let me look into this and i'm finding out that it's these like ancient like mineral creature uh-huh. things you know like whatever the hell it was it's it's been it's been a while so i i don't remember yeah. exactly yeah that's correct it, they're they're their little structures are made out of uh, minerals, which yeah. almost is similar to like you know chitin, which you would find in shellfish, but yeah. not. And so, I was like, I'm reading this, I'm learning about this, and I'm like, that's not the vex. What the hell is wrong with people? <laughs> and I, I was just like prepared to die on that hill that everyone was wrong <laughs> because of course that's not the vex like what are what what no that doesn't make any sense and it's it became like a matter of um eventually the radiolarian fluid got confirmed and i was like okay well i guess it's just you know alien radiolaria and like you said mm-hmm. it, we have radiolaria the vex are radiolarian fluid same name, same probably same properties of some um, some degree, amount. yeah, 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 yeah. But they are different. They are not the same thing, right? We named we, and this is this is the funny thing about <clears throat> Destiny lore. At any point, it can change. So, yep, certain things that we've learned over the years, like for instance, the Deep Stone Crypt, the biggest mystery of all, um, was you know told to us in this latest lore uh, to just be a naming convention spawned by Clovis Bray (laughs) Mm. that he took from uh, some other story and just brought it into here and said, this, that's what I'm going to name this place. Yep. That's uh, that's actually down at the, uh, that's down a bit in this. I know. I know I made a note of it. No, 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 it's fine. It's fine. I was trying to find it. So for 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 me in D one, I was adamant oh, when I first learned about radiolaria. I was adamant about the radiolarians being uh, some enhanced version of our primitive species here on Earth, and I was one of those first believers. You know, this thought: oh gosh, that's awesome, that's so cool. Maybe some crazy story about the traveler's light touching our organisms on our Earth somehow enhance them and then they split off in some parallel universe you know you spin foil is a great thing uh so <laughs> i was one of those people at first that was just like yes some crazy thing happened and now the the bane of all existence in our universe is this primitive organism that's here on earth <laughs> yeah. i remember back in the early days there were people who tried to 
I, I feel like an asshole for saying who tried to say for people who, who were very <laughs> confident that the hive and the vex were the same species oh, just man. billions of years apart. And yeah. I'm sorry for <laughs> laughing. But what the fuck? Wow. I mean, you know what, though? That, and, and not to knock it, but anything can happen. I mean, if they wanted to, they could make that true. It could. Still, it, to this day. right. And we would feel like jerks. <laughs> maybe, that's, maybe that's Savathun's big plan, though, right? Like in uh-huh. Witch Queen, she's going to reveal to us that she created the Vex all oh, along. Oh, my goodness. That would be horrible. I, you know, there's certain the things that you paradox. just don't want to do as, as a writer. And I hope they do not ever do that. I got to admit, I, I also do hope they don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so we also learn that while while they are interacting with the Vex, that Maya Sundaresh is involved with Clovis Bray now, which is very bum, odd. Bum, bum. But which Maya, one is what she? are you doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so and explain that to people real quick. I don't think we should. I think we should let that, okay. that come right. when it comes. Okay. And, well, I mean, um, people know when you know, all of a sudden Maya shows up, you're going to be like, huh? Yeah, <laughs> this, it is a little weird. It's like, when, when did you get there? <laughs> yeah, they're not really friends. Did, did, they, did they take her in the raid on Ishtar? Is that what happened? Uh, well, maybe we'll go to the Vault of Glass and she'll be there. Oh my god, I hope. That'd be so Wouldn't funny. that be cool if That'd Maya Sundaresh was in the Vault of Glass? Yeah, we or at least her... like, so, yeah, trapped. No, like well, if she was just trapped. Oh no! I was gonna say we see her as a guide to the Vault of Glass, Ooh, and we're like, yeah. "Oh my God, it's Maya Sundaresh! How is she still alive?" And then yeah. basically we go through the same thing that Clovis does, and it's like, "Oh shit!" You know, at the Pray- at the end of the raid, she's no longer the guide. Yeah, because that was cool. We had Praetith who guided us through the second happening of Vault of Glass with the ghost shells. That was yep. pretty neat. Hmm. But um, so to jump right in to a little bit more of, of vault of glass. Um, actually, uh, we're going to talk about some that we're going to be in the note vex fluid. We're going to jump down a little bit. Chemically, the okay. vex is an alkaline alkaline solution of dense salts and water. The salts range from sodium to calcium to lead and even in barely detectable amounts, plutonium, not good. Yeah, to that's drink. funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Kaber, Kabar, Kabir, yeah. however you want to call them. He drank of them, and they tasted like the sea, which salts and water. I guess I understand. Uh-huh. And uh, so, just before that, though, we've seen vex milk. We've we've walked on vex milk. We've been hurt by vex milk. We've seen a vex milk waterfall. It has a liquid property, but Clovis Bray here decided to really just get his hands, or probably someone else's hands, dirty. And uh, yeah. so, <laughs> Vex milk is a non-Newtonian, highly conductive, non-compressible. Compress- its viscosity and surface tension are variable. It can form a resistant membrane or climb the walls of a container like a superfluid. And so, aside from the superfluid aspect, I was able to make a non-Newtonian uh, fluid. And so... I'm going to go ahead and put that on screen right now. <laughs> go uh, for it. <laughs> but since I have it on screen, Rana, can you can, can can you continue in some Vex fluid? We'll just let this loop a little bit. <laughs> so, so, wait, what? <laughs> oh, did you not know this? <laughs> no, no, I saw this. I saw this. So, yeah. <laughs> continue in some Vex fluid. Well, I mean, uh, I don't have the notes in front of me now because I have the video in front of me. So can you just continue? I'll just let this loop a little bit. Okay. So (laughs) Vex milk, chemically, the Vex milk is an alkaline solution of dense salts and water. The salts range from sodium and calcium to lead and even in barely detectable amounts, plutonium, not good to drink. Suspended in the solution are cells of silicoid structure, 100 to 200 micrometers, micrometers in size. Their shape are heterogeneous, but always geometric, rem- reminiscent of Earth's radiolarian protozoa. See, that's where they talk about it being named after our our radiolarian. Um, after many have, color. yeah, yeah, many have needle-like pseudopods, which transform between stiff spines and motile whips 
on the basis of some piezoelectric response, imaging of internal structure detects a nucleus, a genetic mo Yeah, piezo. 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 How do you say it? Piezo. Piezoelectric response. And a generic molecule an analogous to DNA. Though I speculate read write times are much faster on the order of milliseconds, perhaps exploiting some quantum effect. Great. So I have allowed. That's basically yeah, saying like VEX themselves, the radiolarian fluid is like conductivity for computers, right? Well, uh, piezo. Okay, so piezoelectric response. That's used in that's used in the science and medical field a lot to describe uh, muscle spasms or the electroconductivity of muscular structures within cellular uh, organisms. So, in order to get so, here's the funny thing. In order for your muscles to work, they have to have electricity. Well, you're like, how does that happen? Well, a chemical happens inside your body that splits off and causes firing synapses from your mind to your your nerve endings to your muscles. So all of your muscles are controlled by the nerve endings in your nervous system, which is also ultimately controlled by the motor neurons in your brain. So your motor neurons in your brain have synapses or firings or little, you know, electronic, electric, electrical arc sparks, whatever you want to call them on a cellular level that cause the tips of your your nervous system to fire off mm -hmm. and so piezo or piezoelectric sorry i keep calling it piezo because that's the instrument but piezoelectric responses are those responses due to that mind having those synapses fire yeah so if you think this is what's crazy about this because complex organisms require a mind cell or a mind brain or some sort of centralized collection of cells to cause uh, these types of things. Because amoeba don't have that. They just blob around until they bump into something that they can absorb. So the vex being of a certain type of DNA, which would be, un that doesn't exist. To have your DNA, DNA structure very much have its own piezoelectric uh, Autonomy is just it's it's not it's not a real thing. So so to the vex, that's something that just doesn't exist in our reality at all, which is really cool. But can you imagine on a DNA level your body being able to create electricity? So like you would almost be able to just it would be really cool because you would as a person would be able to just split every one of your cells off into wherever they wanted to go at any point in time it, and then come back. If you're asking me if I want to be static shock, the answer is yes. <laughs> it's fly so, around trash can lid. So the, the crazy thing for me to wrap my mind around is this idea that the radiolarian fluid is on its base, the most base level within its DA, DNA capable of having a piezoelectric response um, that just changes everything. Mm -hmm. So that, that very much explains why they're able to move around in this viscous fluid and share a vex conduit of knowledge without ever having to form into some entity before it can, you know, share that information with another entity of their own kind. Back. Okay, go ahead. So to further expand on that knowledge would be like, how do the VEX share their information across time and space? Well, one of the ways would be this VEX fluid because it's all connected to one another. <clears throat> so maybe on a DNA level for the VEX, uh, it's kind of like a highway of information that can just be shared. Interesting thoughts. Anon's getting his package, if you're wondering the silence.
Just a moment. Okay, sorry about that. No worries. I just rambled a little bit longer. Yeah. <laughs> so so where, where, where did we leave off? I was, I was just, I was just, re I was just relaying the the thought of Vex minds all being able to share their information across time and space. This is almost part of that fundamental uh, idea for them. If you think about all of their DNA being able to uh, have these piezoelectric responses, because if they're on a if they're on a very if they're if that's if that's written within their DNA, they're on a whole nother level. Hmm. So so I was just thinking maybe this is how they share all their information across a stream of radiolarian fluid. Because it doesn't take a mind. It's just a very it, it's almost like um I can understand how the Vex conduit works to some degree where they can share this knowledge because they're not like ants where they have the bump antenna together, right? Because mm -hmm. they're very much just like, how can I, how can I, what's a good analogy? Okay, here's one. They're like an electrical wire that is never broken across time and space. In order for a light to come on, you have to flip a switch. You're bridging the gap between electricity and that light to come on. The Vex are very much the same way. They have this quantum highway of DNA spread throughout their existence. And for information to be shared across one another, the only thing they need is the radiolarian fluid to have some sort of uh, bridge and so they use the machinery to carry the radiolarian fluid around blah 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 vex gates blah 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 highway or i mean uh waterfalls of radiolarian fluid uh, so but all of that is very much connected once once they gather that information they can easily stream it back to themselves so you think about like hydras vex mines and mm -hmm. and higher higher intelligent forms of vex stuff like that quaria oh my god what did she learn? But anyway, um, you know, Atheon, all the Atheon, whatever you want to call them, all of these different uh, Vex forms can share their information as long as there is conduit, as long as there is this, a bridge to stream that radiolarian knowledge back to one itself. Yeah. Sorry, rant. <laughs> no, no, I appreciate it because I really can't focus right now because I think my package was just stolen. Oh no. Yeah. The uh, required delivery. They say it was signed. It's not here. Oh, There's no, no truck. There's no no one. But it's saying that it was signed. Oh, no. That's not good. Yeah. Well, you can send a message and say package not received. And yeah, then they can check that's, the signature. That's, like, it's, it's just really hard for me to focus on, on the show right now. I'm really sorry about that. Yeah, no worries. <sighs> Fuck's sakes. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know where we are now. Um, We're at the uh, part where Maya Sundarish comes into a system with work. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so just to uh, keep it moving, I guess. Um, yeah. Clovis Bray apparently is not uh, working with, with Rasputin because he, on this at least, because he, he mentions, I would request a telen uh, tele teleno teleonomic analysis yeah. from an AI com resource if I did not expect the tyrant Rasputin to get a, get hit, its rubby, rubby Russian paws on my data. <laughs> <laughs> so he is not working with Rasputin at least. Which is weird because like he doesn't even trust... Rasputin. Yeah, it's it's it is 
it's not what you would expect. You would expect them to be working together. Right. And so Rasputin, the original Anna Bray, was kind of Anna Bray's, you know, pet project. Hmm. Which is kind of odd. So, like, if you think about all the Bray family, um, they're working in concert with one another, but not really, like, <laughs> friendly. Yeah. <laughs> not in a friendly way. <laughs> yeah. So, um, that actually goes on to say uh, that the, the researchers here are being infected by the Vex, he, re- he writes, uh, when we are infected by Vex memes, as the Ishtar data warns against, against, I suspect that we are simply experiencing Vex patterns, jumping from one substrate to another, recruiting our own brains and bodies as media for their spread. It is not hostility, it's simply their way of interacting with the universe. So, yeah, that's kind of crazy to think about, like, a Vex infection, but we've always kind of known that because of the original Vault of Glass, like the the I think it was the warlock robes. It like warned against sleeping inside it because the metal is still alive. Vex metal is not just a piece of metal. It's a it's a living organism of the Vex. That's right. I remember that. That's that's another crazy thought. Like yeah. how does that? Yeah. Anyway, I mean, so vault of glass. When you think about glass. In in a in a way that we can relay it to or relate it to, to Earth, uh, when you superheat anything on Earth, pretty much or any kind of uh, you know carbon based matter, it, once you superheat it enough, it, it pretty much turns to glass, right? So that's why they keep using this glass reference in so many sci fi stories. I mean, it br- pops up here, it pops up in Halo, it pops up in a lot of other sci fi games um, when. If you think about the the Forge Star being so close to, um, you know, the Volantis being completely made out of glass, I guess that makes sense because all of that matter has been superheated so much that all it becomes is glass or a glass type structure. Well, the the star wasn't made of glass; it was an island on no, no, the no. planet. Okay. Yeah, the planet planet orbiting Volantis. Sorry, yeah. the Vex planet. Which, if the vault of glass is glass, hmm. I mean, only the 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 farthest part in, and even then, yeah. only a part of it. You know, it's it's that giant gate, triangular gate, which is already unusual um, for Vex. Uh, triangular oh. gate that Atheon came through. Was it a, was it a gate, or did he just spawn there? I think he just spawns there in the middle. Yeah. And it was in front of the gate. Game. Yeah. I mean, whatever it was, it was it's clearly important to the Vex. Can you imagine if they explained some way for that gate to have existed that really wasn't created by the Vex? Oh, man. Yeah. Anyway. But, uh, so... They are uh, concerned about being infected by the Vex, obviously. Uh, so Clovis actually mentions he reformats his assistant uh, because there's no sense taking risk. Who knows what might get into his head through a proxy link. <laughs> Which yeah. We've kind of like uh, edged around the topic of, but yeah. What happened to Ishtar? I mean, you remember the Ishtar team? They were just, we know from past lore, the Ish- Ishtar team was, uh, simulated in just an infinite amount of times almost. Yeah. So uh, let's get into entry eight, and then uh, I'm sorry to have to cut the show short, but I, I need to uh, figure whatever the hell just happened with, uh, with this thing. I, I really can't let it just wait. No worries. Uh, so in entry eight, Clovis has his Eureka moment, and he actually says the word Eureka in his notes. He learned how to... Create the Alkahest. The Alkahest is the secret to making Exos work. And he did this by exposing uh, Vex Radiolarian fluid to Clarity. So uh, Clarity, as best we know, is stasis. So on the screen now is a a shot from the raid 
this should this is the downstairs room on the uh, security encounter. It's the best one I can find. There are these pipes that with this like stasis colored liquid flowing through them all throughout the raid. And I think those pipes actually are pushing a form of stasis. It's not a fully uh, solidified form of stasis, but it's a form of stasis still. And I oh, think cool. I personally think uh, his passing radiolarian fluid through stasis, through clarity, is basically uh, taking the physical stasis crystals and pouring radiolarian fluid over it to kind of uh, expose it to clarity, to kind of like how uh, instead of cooling your drink, it is changing the uh, the, the properties of it. Yeah. And so that's what, how he uh, created it. Which is interesting when we when we think back to when Eris touched the statue and yeah. her rock changed form. Yeah, that was another reaction to clarity. Whatever her rock was was able to react through, uh, or maybe not even clarity, maybe whatever, or through yeah. clarity control at the very least, because that's that's how he refers to clarity control. Yeah. And then and, she uh, uses, and then she uses those abilities in the trailer. Yeah, the, she does eventually use them. So it must, and maybe it was clarity all along, stasis all along. Yeah. Uh, and he he he's trying to figure out a way to make this sound uh, sellable to his uh, his board of directors or whatever for his company. This entire thing is being hidden it's it's being masqueraded as like a, a life uh preserving effort yeah <laughs> uh, on europa it's like we're we're protecting european life from extinction blah 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 and of course it's not that's not what clovis is about that's not what he wants and so he's trying to find a way to sell this to his board and the idea of saying we're passing Vex radiolarian fluid through clarity is, is too crazy. So he, he writes too complex ex exo minecraft too harsh and cold clarity plus Vex fluid is the spice, the secret sauce of the oil of easy function. He decides to, uh, he actually decides to call it, uh, I'm sorry. I thought I had it right in front of me. I guess I don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> he, 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 he basically says it like introduces the, uh, the stutter that the human brain, human brain needs. Yeah. He's messed up. Yeah. So when, so <laughs> he knows that there's going to be a crash eventually, but without, Without this fluid, um, you can't go any. He can't go any further in his research, and so he has to have. He needs to push this agenda uh, forward, and he can't do it alone because yeah. he needs the tools at his disposal, which not only are his complete empire of you know Cl uh, Clovis Bray team, uh, but he needs he needs probably more funding, probably more tools, probably more manpower, if you will. Yeah. Which and is I mean, crazy he's to see. He's so think. close. He, he's figured it out. He, he's got it. It's just a matter of making it work. So right. He, he's at the finish line. He just needs to cross it now, which eventually he does. We have exos. We know, we know, we know the end of the story is he succeeded. It's just what happens during his success. Yeah. And so this is kind of funny because he gets, he gets, he has these encrypted messages, which, go out to Elsie. Mm. I don't know, man. It's crazy. So he go he jumps from he jumps from, you know, basically keeping it a secret and having to sell it under the guise of, of some <laughs> it's almost like branding it a package name so that people don't inquire well, about what what it's made of. He still keeps what it's made of a secret to Elsie. He doesn't tell her yeah. either. He just tells her he figured it out. Which is interesting because he needs her help. Yeah. And they're not really on the best terms. Yeah, that's very true. 
Hmm. Well, we know what happens to Elsie. <laughs> and we'll, 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 we will be getting into all of that uh, yeah. in the coming weeks. Uh, our next show will be on January 31st, because we're just going to keep up the two week from here. And uh, so we'll, we'll be getting back into this. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really sorry to have to cut the call this short. But, you know, a very expensive package has uh, been signed for not by me. So I need to figure out what happened to it. I hope you find it. Yeah, I do too. I'll be, I'll be, I will be unhappy in this resolution. (laughs) This is, this is why, this is why I hate having things delivered to my house. I want it to be delivered to a store where it physically cannot be stolen. Right. But sorry about that. Uh, well, pull out your hawk moon and go chase him down. Yeah, I will. It's yeah, right over there. I'll fucking get him. <laughs> 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 All right, everybody. That's going to be it for us this week. Uh, if you want to find us, we're at Loose Cannon Show on Twitter. Uh, any updates to the show will be tweeted there. Have a good one, everyone. Bye. Laters. Bye.